everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, along with my teaching partner, Max Massiano. Max, how are you doing? Hi, Dennis. I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Really good. And uh, today we want to welcome everybody to the chat. Uh, you know, Max, last time we were together, we talked about uh, alkalizers yeah, and, uh, yeah. you know, and how they play a role in their color process. And uh, I think maybe today we should take it a step further uh, and talk about how, well, let's say colorants, how they play an important role in what we're doing. Uh, so if you're here watching us for the first time and uh, you're watching us on YouTube, please, uh, if you like what you hear today, please hit the subscribe button and that way we will uh, retain you as a follower. Uh, also, if you click that little bell, that bell will give you notification every time we drop a new video. And uh, we do these quite regularly where we uh, share some nuggets of information you might find helpful. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, uh, tell you a little bit about how we approach the subjects that we discuss. Number one, we try to be very open and very, very truthful about it. We try to give you the facts and let you make an informed decision. Uh, because we truly believe that the magic in hair color is not in the product at all. It is in you, the gifted artist. And uh, so we just try to expand your uh, education and your information so that you feel more grounded when you're doing your hair color services. And of course, I'm sure many of you would agree, even if you're not excited about what we share with you, you would agree that we all had a really minimal start in hair color edu education when we went to school. And so as a result of that, some of us go on our entire career never really understanding um, why color works the way that it does. So we try to bring a little bit of clarity to you. And in doing that, sometimes we challenge belief systems. Sorry, what can I tell you? Um, Sometimes the things we were taught are not actually accurate. I don't think anybody wanted to lie to us, but I think they certainly, if they didn't know the answer, uh, many of them made up answers. Uh, we call it the University of MSU making stuff up instead of knowing what you're talking about. So, you know, there's a lot of graduates from MSU. Mm. <laughs> right, Max? <laughs> Check. So, uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, the colorants and uh, what we like to call it is um, colorants. And when we think about colorants, uh, here's what I find many times in education, the metaphors and the analogies and the tools that we use to teach hair color even though we, we know that those, that's not really how hair color works, many times by using those kinds of tools, it still gives the same message. Somebody understands that it works. In fact, Max, how many people do you think are there that think hair color works like this? Well, yeah, uh, just, just taking what you said a step further, Dennis, you know, the other day I was talking with one of our students who was really having an issue with gray coverage with a, a new brand she was trying. Right. And what she said, what she said was, you know, with my my previous brand, it had equal parts of blue, red, and yellow dye molecules in every shade. So I got a hundred percent gray coverage a hundred percent of the time. And to me, you know, I I got this visual in my head. I just pictured you know, like elves on an assembly line dropping, you know, blue bowling balls, red basketballs and yellow BBs into a machine and it's spinning out tubes of hair color when right. really there, there are no blue, red and yellow dye molecules, right? What? These are all, what? I know. Say I'm that sorry. again? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you know, what we're really dealing with here are chemicals and the word dye molecule gets thrown around a right. lot. Right. And I think that, you know, we need to bring some clarity to the subject because the reality is you do not have a dye molecule until the hair color process is completed 
and it is developed exactly. inside the cortex. Yeah there's, a, there, yeah, there's only two places that you can get a completed dye molecule. One, inside the hair, which is our goal. Mm -hmm. And two, yeah. in the bowl, if you let the color right. set there long enough. Exactly. Nowhere else. <laughs> so here, here we see the visual of how some people think it's made, but this right. is not the actual case. So let's dive into this a little deeper. Great. So you mix color and developer together. You get a little explosion. That explosion is the start of the oxidation process. And what happens is the colorants, which are colorless in the beginning in the tube, right. go through the oxidation process. They're also very tiny. They start out very tiny. And as they develop due to the addition of developer, hence the name, mm -hmm. they start to connect and form bigger structures, which inevitably should get caught in the cortex and become part of the cortex. And they also develop into their proper color. Exactly. So you can see in the visual, the color and the developer are mixed together. You see the the three different structures that are smaller and colorless or, or white. And at the end of the process, you have a bigger colored structure where those individual pieces are essentially connected. That's as close of a representation to a completed dye molecule as we can show you. Right, it's a, and it's as simple as we really can make it. Um, the thing that, that's important, I think, here is to remember that you don't have any color molecules. When we talk about a color molecule, it means that when you have a color molecule, you have all the components connected. And when light strikes those components, what we see is a color. When those components are not completely connected, or when they disengage, it changes the color that we visually see. So it's not only chemistry, but it's physics and chemistry together. Because remember, color is really all in your head. <laughs> Literally. It is all in your head. And it's so it's hard for us to wrap our mind around it when we have a bowl of product in our, in our setting on our station to understand that Yes, these are chemicals when they mix together and when they process for a certain amount of time, which we call develop, then visually what we see, because the structure changes, so visually what we see is a color, and that color is based upon the way light strikes that molecule and how it registers in our, in our vision. And that's so right. yeah, that's the thing to keep in mind. So like when people under process hair color, they don't get maximum dye development. They take a color off before it's completely developed. They're not going to see the color that was originally created. They will see a different shade. Sure. Sure. It's almost like, you know, building a, a, a wall out of drywall. If you only put four nails in the wall, it's probably not going to be the most sturdy or stable. So it also has, it gives it a, a chance that it could fall apart. So if you're not developing your dyes fully, you're, you're also not going to have a very stable end result. And just as easily as those colorants started to come together, if they don't come together fully, they can also come apart. And Basically, what we call that in the world of hair color is fading. Right. That, and, and fading has a definition or a belief system that the colors washes out of my hair. Yeah, it's going down the drain. And that's not necessarily the case. No, it's not. And, and that's why, you know, when each one of these dye intermediates, as they're called, they don't all 
process or develop at the same rate. So when you look at a color and it's still processing and you choose to take it off early, there may be some dye intermediates that have not completely developed yet. So you're going to see a different color when you take it off early than you do right. when you let it go for the full processing time. And we, people do that all the time in the salons, you know, they under process color. And so they it, go, looks good, take it off. Right, right. You know? So, so I think they, I think that they think in their mind that they're all processing at the same time. So if I take it off early, it's okay. I'm just getting a lighter version of the shade. But the, all the components don't process at the same rate. You know, it's like any structure that you build, there's certain things that you connect first, other things you connect another time. You yeah. know, we know when we test it in the laboratory that if we let the entire mixture process for 30 minutes, we will get that result. Right. We don't say if you process for 20 minutes, you'll get that's a lighter version of that same result. <laughs> what we say is full time for the shade that we're telling you we've created. So right. that's the reason sometimes we get those off shades. Our color goes strange on us because we don't really understand what's going on in the hair. Absolutely. So Max, what do we have here? <laughs> so. The, the top picture actually shows you, uh, this is paraphenylene diamine, and it is the most commonly used colorant in our industry. And it is used to help create depth, or what we like to refer to as background and shade. And you can see on the top in the visual, it is actually like, kind of like a crystalline structure, like almost like salt or sugar, it's in granules. It's actually pulverized and pounded down into almost like a, a powdered sugar state, which you can see on the, in the bottom in the little uh, glass dish. And that is what is added into a tube of hair color. This is one of the components, and this is actually what it looks like before it's added into the tube of hair color. And you can see it's white. Right. It's not a, it's not a blue, it's not a red, and it's not a <laughs> yellow. It is literally white powder. Exactly, exactly. And this, and this is just one of probably what, there's, there's typically, I would say under 20 different colorants that are used in different combinations with each other that are approved for use on human beings. Right, So absolutely. So all, all brands of hair color use some of these 20 different colorants and it's their, their combination and arrangement in a particular formulation that gives you that one shade and that one tube. And we're gonna get into this even deeper in the next few slides. So hang on to your seats, you guys. Exactly. So, so here's what the chemical breakdown looks like. You know what, Max, let me bring this up full scale. Do it. All right, and I'm gonna take me and I'm going to shrink me down. There we go. And here's the thing. We break these down into three different categories, uh, really, in chemistry, we just want you to think about these in three separate things. Some of them cross over. So an intermediate could be a coupler or a modifier. But precursors are what they are in the beginning. And these are really the chemical structures of, of what they look like. There's paraphenylene diamine, there's amino phenol, and there is, uh, which one is this? Heather Heterocyclic. Cyclic. Diamine, yeah. yeah. And so, so these are precursors. So this is what is carried into the hair strand. 
and they bind together with each other and bind together with the structure of the hair. So it's like you're building a structure within the hair strand itself. And it is colorless until all the components of the structure are connected or they've completed the color process. But here's really what it is. It's not a can of blue, red, or yellow. It's really a chemical structure. We really do chemistry. Right. We're not really painting a house, if you will, or painting a wall. Max, anything you want to add to this? Um, just what I was going to, what I would like to add to it. <laughs> that sounded so funny. Uh, is the, the precursors or these primary intermediate they are typically the backbone of the shade. There's two parts to every shade. This is the first part. You've got to have the precursor, which helps give you the depth or the level of the shade. That's kind of what creates the anchor, if you will, to a color. Right. Then we move into what are called couplers and couplers are color modifiers. Couplers help to give the tone or the special personality to that, to that uh, shade. So it's always going to be a series of intermediates and couplers combined that give you that particular shade. And what is, what's so interesting is depending on the coupler, you can have one primary intermediate, and if it's mixed with one coupler, it's gonna give you one shade. If it's mixed with two different couplers, it could give you something completely different. Right. So you could, have, you could have one combination that gives you a brown, another that gives you a violet, yet they still have some of the same or similar components. Yeah, you know, in the laboratory, when you get the raw chemicals, they come to you coded. They, they're an alpha code and a numeric code. So at the chemist's bench, he will take formula A, mix it with formula one. Formula A, mix with formula two. Formula A, mix with formula three, and so on and so forth. Then he takes formula B, mix it with formula one, formula B, mix it with formula two. So they're testing to see what color combinations they can create. Now, here's the goal of chemists who really want to create a, a really easy to use and a clean hair color brand. The goal is to create the entire brand with as few dye intermediates as possible meaning that knowing how to mix them. So if I get a color that is not what I want, is go back and remix another combination to see if I can achieve that. And the reason for that is that it keeps it clean. Now, some chemists don't choose to do that. Some chemists choose to look at the combination of dyes and they say, well, it's close enough. If I add a little bit more of this to the formula, I can push it over there and it will, you know, resemble what target, what our target was. So sure. <clears throat> understand that's how colors are made. That's why there is such a variation in those couplers themselves, or <clears throat> should I say in the way they combine their hair color products. And uh, as Max was saying, here is an example of, combinations and these are actually real combinations that will create these real colors right so if i take p amino phenol okay which is a precursor intermediate and i right. mix it with just resource well i think if i mix it with m amino phenol which is a coupler i will create a warm brown if i take the same p amino phenol and I mix it with resorcinol. So forget M-aminophenol. I'm going to mix it with resorcinol. I create yellow green. So you can go right down the list here. And these are like primary or precursor intermediates up at the top. 
you know, phenylenediamine, P amino phenol, and uh, all these color combinations. These are the colors that are made when you combine these, these intermediates or these chemicals together. This is how you make hair color. It's not the elves putting one blue molecule, one red molecule, one yellow molecule in the tube of color. So it's still okay to understand, you know, how much blue, red, and yellow are in a color called brown, but it's not, I'm putting only one part of blue, two parts of red, and three parts of yellow to make that brown. That's the way we explain it in common layman's language, but in the chemist language, I don't even know what one part of blue, two parts of red. I don't know. That's not how I make brown. I mix P amino phenol and I mix and it with M amino that, phenol. If you said that to a chemist, a cosmetic chemist, they would look at you like you had 18 heads. They'd go, I don't right. know what you're talking about. Right. You know, they'd be like, it's P amino phenol with M amino phenol. The end. The end. You yes, so, absolutely. So, so when so, you so have... why so Max, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but so, no, no. so why do we teach people that? Why do we teach them that? Well, we teach them crazy stuff. Why do we teach them that brown is one blue, one red, one yellow? It's not. Period. You can't make it. Uh, or why do we teach them that brown is one part blue, two parts red, three parts yellow? I mean, that's what the color brown is when you're working with paint. Right. Right. Truly, I think part of it comes from, you know, hair color brands trying to make this concept as easy as possible to wrap right. your head around. Right. Some of it, but when, when, you know, hair color brands talk about special molecules, micro dye molecules, mm -hmm. uh, five sided, you know, star shaped molecules, things like that. That's really, honestly, it, it's marketing. It, it's meant to fit a story to sell product. And there's nothing wrong with selling product. Right. But, but this is the reality is, is what we're looking at right here. It, it, it's chemical. Right. It's, that, it's that, that Petri dish of white colorless powder right. that goes into the, the tube or bottle with other white colorless powders and at the end of the development time, they give you an end result. Right. That do, combines with whatever you're putting it on. You right. Know, the hair, your jeans, your eyebrows, you know. Yeah. My so, sweater. So here's why, as a trainer, I try to get people to understand the concept of brown is one part blue, two parts red, and three parts yellow. And gray is one blue, one red, one yellow and copper is two reds and a yellow, because we have to have some sort of a reference point when we're formulating. And because the color is now complete once it's built, we know at the end of the processing time, we will achieve that visual result. Right. We know that. Sure. So, so when I do dye outs, which we recommend highly, Mm -hmm. And I dye out my colors and let them process. I know exactly what color that will be visually. I know what it, how it registers in my eye because I'm looking at it. But when I'm formulating, I have to understand that this is what my end result is. This is what the hair is going to contribute. So now I have to figure out a way to formulate those two things together so that I mix the proper ratio of fully completed shades, not parts. Right. These are fully completed shades. That's why you will hear chemists say, I have a good friend who says, brown is not one blue, two reds and three yellows. And he is absolutely correct when you're making hair color. Right. But he is absolutely incorrect when you're formulating hair color. Well, you have to, you've got to have a point of reference, right? Right, right. And so it's like, we're, we're using this, you know, and, and that's kind of like, I mean, we've done, we've done a chat on this 
too. It's like where the, the lines get skewed from artistic principles versus yes. the, the reality of hair color principles. But what we do take from the world of art and from, you know, Dr. Munsell is the center of the color sphere or what he referred to sometimes as a color tree is mm -hmm. it ranges from white, gray, and black. Right. And that's the center. It's yeah. not brown. Brown is a, an uneven combination of the three primary colors. Right. So when we take this into, you know, when we teach formulation, you know, at least with our education, we teach it that, you know, brown is one part blue, two parts red, three parts yellow. You, you don't have to agree. That's just how we do it. It works great right. for us. Right. And we, we find a lot of success and predictability using it that way. Some companies will teach that brown is equal parts of the three primary colors. But when you've taken food coloring or, you know, Play-Doh. Yeah. And you've mixed equal parts of the three primary colors. Have you really gotten brown? Right, right. And I think so. the center of the wheel, a color wheel, color sphere, color tree, the importance about that is not necessarily about it being black, gray, and white. Right. The importance about it is that it is something that we call achromatic. Now, what that means is no chroma. Chroma is just another word for tone. Right. Okay, so, so the closer to the center of the wheel I bring a formula, the less light reflection, the less tonal reflex I will achieve. That's why when we mix color, when we start mixing three and four shades in our bowl, we have created an achromatic result. No matter what you do, take her out in the parking lot, put her under a, a ring light. I don't care what you do to make reflect happen. You can do that. You can make black hair have reflect if you shine enough light on it. You know, sure. it's, a, it's not natural reflect. It's artificially created by us. Um, but that's the, see, when we use a theory or a concept, there's an important piece that you want to pull from that. Yeah, I mean, you could say, well, it's interesting that the center of the wheel is black, gray, and white. Well, what's even more interesting than that is that black, gray, and white are the same color. Right. Only, right. A, different, only a different degrees of saturation. That's all. They're the same color. Sure. But what I want people to pull from it is that it's achromatic. So when I mix too many colors with too much background in the colors, I'm going to create a color that may not achieve the result I'm looking for. If you want it to look flat, drab, muted, and subdued, rock on. Mix as many right. shades as you want, right? Because yeah, you'll get it. You'll certainly do. You certainly will. Absolutely. And I think too, Dennis, just to, to stress you know, something that you taught me that was taught to you by your mentor. At the end of the day, the science of hair color is the science of precise estimation. Absolutely. So, so we are essentially predicting or attempting to predict all of these different variables that are going to give us the end result. Yeah. But sometimes we don't always get what we predicted. It's because we're also applying these, you know, uh, art concepts to chemicals and to a chemical fiber, the hair. And there could be even just one, one thing off or, you know, uh, a we have an or, or heavy metal buildup that makes everything change. We have an unpredictable canvas. Yeah. Even in nature, in virgin hair, all the hair strands are not the same color. Right. Mother Nature allowed it to be random. Right. That's right. And even, even from strand to strand, 
each strand of level four hair doesn't have the same amount of eumelanin and pheomelanin in it right. from strand right. to strand. So there's right. so many variables. Now, this isn't to scare anybody because we've got, you know, like we as a industry have the science of hair color pretty down pat. And most right. of the time we all get it right. But what we're trying to just stress to you is that it's not always just cut and dry and it's not always just a marketing story that makes it okay. Right. Now remember, if it's uneven hair color, there's a word for that in our industry created called dimension. Right. So it's not uneven. We just have dimension, highs and lows. Um, variation, <laughs> baby. <laughs> not to be confused with dementia, which sometimes I, th I think I have. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so Max, here we have, right, some different brand comparisons. So not only what we've just been sharing with you are the variations, then each brand decides sometimes, I'm not going to use those dye intermediates, I'm going to use a different set of dye intermediates to make my level six. Yeah. So, so what we did here is we took three different completely unrelated brands of 6N. So you can see brand A has PPD, p phenol, both which are dye precursors or primary intermediate. And then it has m phenol, which is a coupler. Right. With brand B, we have PPD and p phenol. Again, the same because you've got to have that backbone in order to give you depth in the right. shade. But this one has three couplers, has m, m amino phenol, two methyl resorcinol, and one naphthol. And then with brand C, we have one primary intermediate, PPD, and, oh, actually two. We have PPD, p amino phenol, and then we have resorcinol, which right. is a coupler. So again, different combinations, all giving you what that brand calls 6N. And if you were to like dye these out, each one's going to have a little bit different depth and a little bit different tonal personality. Because again, as you can see from the bottom of the slide, the sort of stable piece of information here with all of this, and when we're talking about colorants or dyes, in the tube, it's the combination of the precursors along with the couplers that determine that specific shade, depth, and tonal personality. Right. And, and in hairdresser language, we describe it visually. So we let it process and we go, okay, this one seems to have more blue. Right. This one seems to have more green. This one seems to have more violet. So, so you see how we have two different languages going on here. Right. First of all, this is the way hair color is made. But because we don't use this language, we think that it's made the way we speak. And that's what confuses people because, you know, they don't understand that, that we're not dealing with paint. We're dealing with chemistry. That's right. Ooh, this is good. Ooh. <laughs> are you guys having as much fun as we are? And, and if, you, if you're new to this and you didn't see our previous uh, chat about alkalizers, we highly recommend you go back and watch that too. Because when you combine these two different subjects, you really will get a, a good understanding of what's really going on in a tube of hair color. Absolutely. And Dennis, I'm, I'm thinking um, number, our, our next one should be all about developer. I, th I think that sounds great, Max. I think we should yeah. do that. Um, so look, if you're enjoying this and uh, you want to dig a little deeper, we invite you to come and join us at Hair Color School. Uh, Hair Color School is our premier online program. It takes, it is a 30-day immersion course. We offer four 
four hour sessions within those 30 days. You have workbooks that you can use as a resource manual. You get access to the recorded classes for three days after the class so you can go back and review. Um, you also have homework to complete. We assign homework in this course. And the, the homework is really for you, but it is to give you a way so that the information will transfer. We have broken down the whole process of coloring hair into four individual segments where we examine, first of all, the structure of the hair, which is important to understand, and the role that it plays. Secondly, would be the chemistry and hair color understanding. And we, remember, today we just shared a bit. This is a scratch the surface piece of understanding how hair color works. And then we talk about physics, which plays an important role. And nobody ever talks about physics, but <clears throat> it is what it is. And, and, you know, physics is important because. That's why colors react the way they do. That's why we, we think that color washes out of the hair. We think that color fades away, which it really doesn't. Um, and and we, we can share with you the story about how that all works. And then we share with you also our way we teach hair color theory, along with formulation and learning to map. Hair color mapping is one of the tools that we use to help salon professionals become more successful at predicting their end result before they ever mix any color in their bowl. And I think okay. that is huge. And understanding how do we formulate, uh, you know, do we actually, is there a process? There is. And, and it, so it's all an entire 30 days. Plus you are connected through, through a private messaging service to all three coaches. Max is a, a co-facilitates this program with me along with Yvette Prontani out of Chicago, Illinois. And um, we've had rave reviews on this program. We love doing it because it's all about going back to school to learn the yeah. stuff that we didn't get, you know, and I think that is very, very important. So we invite you to join us in Hair Color School. Uh, summer session is already up on our website which is www.gurunation.net. If you log on to our website and you try to go on our educational catalog and your, your screen continues to spin, that's because you have not cleared your cache or you haven't cleaned your cookies. If you have no idea about what I'm talking about, it's really simple. Go to Instagram, look me up on Instagram. It's at RealCaptainColor. And there's a link tree link in that in my bio. Click on that; it'll take you directly to our educational catalog. And uh, I think you you will find that uh, we have some lots of different classes to offer you. And uh, our goal is to help you become more successful. So you can find me on Instagram at that at Real Captain Color. You can find Max at Max M Hair. Those of you watching us here on YouTube. Um, thank you so much. We truly appreciate it. Uh, we invite you to join us on Facebook as well. We have uh, Guru Nation, which is our public page. We also have Guru Hair Tribe, which is a private non-branded forum, which you are uh, welcome to uh, request admission to. And there we have many people on that forum that share ideas and help you become more successful. So uh, hopefully it's been beneficial for you today. I've had a great time. How about you, Max? Hey, I've had a really good time talking about this. <laughs> it, never, it never gets old, you know? It never gets old, I think, because it, it, again, it's continually sharing a message. And every time we have a chat, it comes a little bit differently. If you listen to us, our message is always consistent. But sometimes we might explain it in a different way because of the situation that it may make it easier for you to understand. Um, we truly believe that knowledge is power, but most importantly, it's applied knowledge that is power. And so if you watch this and you say, okay, great, I got some great information, take it and test it. Test what we say, uh, <clears throat> because we don't want you to believe us. We want you to test it so you own the information yourself. And as always, we invite you to come play in our sandbox with us. 
Um, we believe truly it will probably change the way you see color for the rest of your career. So with that being said, it has been fun. Max, thank you, brother, for being here. Anytime. Happy Everybody to else, lend a hand. From my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I am out. Max, how about you? I'm out. See you guys right. later. Bye, everybody. Take care. See Bye. you soon.